H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So there are some interview questions which are aligning towards okay, multi-threading, parallel processing in Python. It's not a popular concept as a programming perspective, but in interview, they are being asking all these questions. Okay, so we are covering that particular topic. I don't want you to lag behind in any interview question. Okay, so this is very specific to interviews. Good with that. We gonna understand what parallel processing is, where that concept is useful. I will give you a practical example where I used it personally. Uh, but the programming language was different at that time uh, <clears throat> But the concept remains the same good with that So we're gonna start with it first start the concept of what is parallel processing and why you do it or why you need it And I'm gonna give you a very simple example very very simple example first Okay, a practical and real one then we'll go for software So practical and real example of multi-processing or parallel processing is basically driving right so when you drive a car how do you drive a car like you have hands on your steering wheels legs on your gas pedal and obviously uh, brakes okay you have uh, if you are manual you are driving manual transmission probably one hand on gearbox correct your eyes on the road your ears on the radio all these things all these activities are going on in your brain parallelly correct so these are parallel processing example this is the best parallel processing example now this now what I want to show is what is what is actually a, a, a individual process is doing okay so your hands are dedicated for only handling steering wheels okay you will, it will not change their uh, behavior okay it's doing only one functionality correct your eyes are not changing their behavior they are doing one functionality okay your legs are doing different functionality from hands okay they will not switch to do that on the other hand in programming language threads okay which we, which are individual processes or multi processing can share their task okay can share their resources okay here you cannot use hand okay either you can use it for switching off and on the radio but that's it but other than that you don't use hand other than handling steering wheels in software though it's not that way okay Threads or parallel things or parallel processes can handle shared resources. Now, relate that example to any of the software stuff. Why we need threading or why we need multi-threading for that matter or parallel processing? Both these words are used, so I'm using both the ways. Okay. So in software, suppose there is a single single task. Okay. Suppose I want to calculate promotions of an employee. So now what is gonna happen? I have like 1500 employees. Okay, and I want to calculate their promotions and send them a text message that there is a uh, promotion and these are your increment. So what if I write a Python program, what, what it's going to do is for employee number one, go and hit the promotions. Okay, then promotion has a typical process like we get the employee data, get his appraisal, okay, set the percentage and all kind of stuff. So these activities are exactly the same for 1500 employees correct so what i can do is i can i can actually start multiple threads to do this activity so what does thread mean so i start one process okay which is actually picking up let's say employee number one to 100 i start another process which is picking up employees from 101 to 200 i'm just making it up okay that's not possible you can actually go for one two three four one taking by thread one okay and two is taken from thread two okay or random random pickup and what they do is they divide this task they actually uh, it, it actually uh, doing the same stuff back to different people so one person doing that instead of that there are two people who are doing it can you increase that then yes you can increase it so suppose you added one more thread there and you are achieving better performance okay so you are now three people are doing it but is that actually true for all kind of activity like uh, if, 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 if this is uh, better for if I actually start 15 threads 
like will that be a 15 times performance improvement the answer is no okay and i'll tell you why so individual process what happens in cpu always happens in positive frequency cycle so if, if you remember i talked about a frequency cycle of a cpu so what happens is cpu has to assign this positive cycle to individual thread so suppose up to this point to this point okay the thread one actually taken over and thread one completes this task whatever it has to be done uh, in this particular point okay whatever single task then probably a one statement so one statement execution happened here it has to do 16 statements like that okay or 20 statements like that out of that one is done here then cpu assigns that cycle to thread number two okay so if you also assign this third task is thread number two and it's switching to another one which is thread number three so now what's happening is cpu switching in you know, different threads now if i change if i actually add a lot of threads okay so 15 16 20 it doesn't actually improve performance rather it do the reverse effect because cpu is actually busy in uh, switching over the threads <clears throat> okay so we don't want that so thread always be used very cautiously in python we hardly use threads because python is fast enough and if you want we can start multiple processes itself instead of threads okay so i, I personally i use only one use case in my life for threading but other than that multiple processes make sense what does that really mean so suppose i want a particular process to be done by two different processes what i will do is i will create a exact copy of this python program and run it from the same shell script okay so what's going to happen this task will be performed by this activity as well as this activity this is process and this is thread so there is a difference between process and thread process has threads okay threads is a thread is a lightweight process <coughs> This little bit of confusing concept, but you will get to know one by one. Okay, step by step. Now in Python, threading is accessible or allowed or given, okay, or provisioned with the help of thread class or threading package. Okay, so thread class or threading module provides thread. So we're gonna start and try to use threading. Okay, and I will give you a very step by step guide. Like how do we use and when do you use threads? Well, with that, any questions in understanding the concept? Concept is important for interview perspective. Can one item have many functionality? Yes, that is hands and steering wheel. Yes, you can do that. You can actually have multiple methods in that uh, process, and you can ask that thread to do multiple processes. Absolutely, Usha, we can do that. Now what's going to happen is now I will create a simple, very simple class. Okay, so to understand like how thread switches and how thread threading is helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll just create test thread class module actually test thread module. And here I'm going to create my first class. Okay, so we'll try try to create classes first. Without classes also it's fine, but try to do that first with the classes. Classes uh, are easier to understand. Later, we will merge that concept to non class behavior. Okay, so I'll just create a uh, class called hello. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll define a simple method here. Now, thread runs in a simple method called run. So, all the processes in thread, okay, if you want to provide a task to a thread, you actually define a run method in a class. Okay, so this run method is a task of a thread. Okay, so, I'm just going to print it. So say hello thread task. This is task for and then what I'll do is I'll just create for i in range. Not actually um, doing some uh, what I can say rigorous logic. It's a simple logic actually. What it will it will do is print hello class and then attach. Now I'll give you how do you actually use string concatenation yeah so you can actually say comma and do it but this is also a better way okay i find out this is also a nice way to print okay sometimes 
so now what is what's happening is it's hello class and I. so basically we are printing i 10 times that's it so this is a task for hello okay now we have one more class suppose because we need to create threads so we are going to create one more class let's say class let's say hi okay and here also i'll define the run method so run method is important okay specifically it's called as run okay okay some glitch in my network sorry about that are you able to hear me now okay thank you <coughs> Okay, some glitch in my network somehow I got disconnected. <coughs> okay, so now you have two different classes have low and high. I have a run method in it. What does that run method do? Just print that particular process. So this is a simple process. So how do we call this method now? Let's go ahead and call these methods. So for that I need instances obviously. So I'll create a hello instance first. So hello equals and I, I hope you remember all these things. Okay, you create an instance of hello and instance of hi. So hi equals to an instance of hi. Correct. So this is it. You created an instance. Okay. And you say hello dot run. Okay. And hi dot run. Okay. But is it a multi threading? Is this a multi threading? Absolutely not. This is not at all multi threading, not even near to it. Correct, but let me run this. Okay, also, I wanted to print uh, by okay or complete thank you, okay or thank you, something like this. Okay, so thank you, and this is like after completion of all these classes. Okay, so give two spaces. So once you are done with the class, and if you want to go back and write something on a main thread or main uh, module, what you generally do is just to give two spaces. And what you want to do is just go back to the indentation of a class and do it, just print it. That's it. So go ahead and run this and check whether it's running or not. Python run. Okay, so I got a uh, thank you. Okay, then hello thread task. Okay, then all the things of hello thread, then hi thread task, and all the things of hi. So this is not parallel, right? Obviously, this is not parallel, this is sequential, and rather this is random. Because we define the classes first, okay. We call the methods, okay. And probably I can just print this later, okay. That might actually print this at the end, right? Yeah, so this is so sequential, so sequential, it's not at all parallel. This is not called as parallel processing, this is not threading. So how do you incorporate threading? So threading is enabled in Python with the help of class called thread. So thread is provisioned to you with the help or with a module. So from threading import thread. Oops, the import is already there. Import thread. Okay, so from threading import thread and now I'm I, I'm gonna create these classes as threads. How do I do that? So I just make these classes as thread. So it's a subclass of thread subclass of thread Okay, same thing. I'm gonna do for high. So high is also what subclass of thread So now these are threads. What's the difference it make? Okay, does it actually make a difference? Okay, are we starting a threads now? So let's go ahead. Let's see whether they are starting as a thread and doing it parallelly. So let me do that. I see no difference. Then what's the point? Then what's the point? All right. Now threads has a particular method which actually start your threads. Okay. So you actually you have created a thread. So let's understand the life cycle of a thread here. What happens is when you create a thread, thread actually goes in Init stage initialization thread. So this one is thread initialization. So this is the stage where thread is available but not running. Okay, so this is thread initialization. Now thread goes to runnable state when you ask to start the thread. This is not running a thread. This is not a way you call run method. You actually create a you actually call a method called start. 
So the start method is important. So once you start, thread allocates the resources to this particular object and creates a lightweight process out of it and start running this particular method, which is a thread task. It always has to be run method. There is a way where we can provide thread uh, non run methods also. That means the method with uh, uh, different name that is also possible. We'll see that. But here I'm going to use the default mechanism of a thread. So this is not the way we're going to change it. And OK, the last stage of thread is completed. So thread can be either complete or waiting. So we'll see all these examples. OK, so complete state or waiting state waiting for a resource. But with that, so now these two states we will learn probably tomorrow. If time doesn't actually permit us, we'll do it tomorrow. Right. So now let's start and add those calls here. So here I'm starting these two threads, but not this way. So I'm going to call start method to it. So it just say hello dot start and hi dot start and actually it starts the thread. So start method coming from where? It's coming from parent. Okay, comes from parent, correct? So parent class. Then do you have to call run method? No. Thread calls run method. Thread itself will have a call to run method. So you have to have what? A run method in your class. Okay, run is actually a task which you have to perform. So with this, so let's go ahead and run the code and see if you are getting any kind of difference. Okay, so you are getting some difference. Okay. So some difference, the only difference is hello star started, completed and by the time is completed, hi star started and thank you sprinted. So now main thread is actually colliding with your hi class. Okay. So now what's going on, I'll tell you. This is not a desired result, definitely not. Your Python program runs in single thread model called main. And main actually ex executes everything sequentially. So this is task number one, this is task number two, task number three. Now what you did is you provided two different threads. So now, now you actually say that, okay, this is multi-threaded program. Now main threads actually provide task to two threads. Okay, this is high thread. Okay, and this is hello thread. So this is T1, T2. They are performing their task, but who is free? Main is free. What main thought, okay, I'm free, what I can do? So, oh, okay, wait a second. I get, I can see, say thank you. Let's print thank you. Okay, so actually, where is thank you? Where exactly is thank you? After two threads are started, you have thank you, but it's getting printed here. And next time, if I run it, I might get a different kind of output. Okay. Okay, I'm getting the same output here. So the next time, definitely, like there are different ways. One more thing I can do. I can do it this way. Okay, print it here. Let's see. Let's see if thread actually make any changes here. Okay, it wrote thank you first, then hello. So you started it. Actually, it's a part of this one. Okay, it, it actually prints it first. So I don't like the way it's handling it. I want parallel processing, which is not happening. Okay, I'm starting, I'm starting threads, but it's not working that way. What I can do is now I can actually tell main thread to join this two thread and run it parallelly. How I can do that? So for that, I'm going to use join method. One thing I can do quickly is I can add some sleep into it. Okay, one thing I can do is I can add some sleep. That means I can actually stop the program for a while, which will allow CPU to do something. Good with that. So shall we do that? Shall we actually add some sleep time? So let's run this and add some sleep time. Okay, just hold that program. So what will happen? It will go here. It will run it and it will hold that this operation for a minor 0.1 second. So for that you have to import one class. Okay, so from time import sleep. Okay, so sleep is a function which we are going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm just calling sleep and sleep for 0.1 seconds. Okay, so this is what sleep for or hold the program for 0.1 seconds. <clears throat> okay. And I will do the same activity in here. Obviously, it's going to hurt the performance, but I want to see 
how this parallel processing is working. Okay, whether it's working or not working, simple as that. So, what I will do is I will run this program now to see if I am getting any desired result. <coughs> okay, I got hello class 0, then hello class 1, then hi class 0, then hi class 1, hi class 2, hi class 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then hello class 2. And then continue. It doesn't actually do whatever I desire, but it's somewhere like okay, 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 kind of like they are doing some parallel processing, but it's still the, it's defeating the purpose. Can I start it like a, a lag? Start with a lag, okay? So, can I start uh, hello and then in 0.1 second or 0.2 second start high? Will that solve the purpose? May not be because I, it might actually end up in doing hello, entire hello first and then high later, but let's see. So add a sleep method and here you add 0.1 okay, or 0.2 maybe okay, or 0.5. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I don't know whether it works or not, but let's see. Okay, not here. Sorry, why start? And go ahead and run this code. See if it actually works. I actually give a reverse effect. Okay, to use a reverse effect. It doesn't actually come. Okay, one more thing you can see that. High class 7, 8, 9 is getting printed. Okay. So now it actually adverse it. So remove this. No, this is not the purpose. Now we can do is we can just tell main method to actually help us. We just say hello dot join. Okay. And we are not giving any timeout. And you say hi dot join. What does that really mean? Is main method now takes part in this. Okay, attach this to, to the main method Good with this and let's try running these methods now. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so now you got thank you, hello task, thread task. Okay, you can see hi zero, hello class, and then hello class continued again. Hi class, so we are still not achieving what we need. Correct, so what we need to do now, what we need to do now. So, what I will do, I will add some, uh, what I can say, some delay, okay, in starting these threads, okay. So, let's do that. So, I'll add some sleep time here, let's say 0.2 seconds some sleep time in here which is again 0.2 seconds so they are starting and add some extra delay here so let's say 0.5 seconds and 0.75 seconds okay so let's see if actually solves the purpose thing is it's not waiting okay because so this one is correct Okay, so hello thread task and then hi thread task. This is starting fine, but my class 0 is getting printed quickly and then again hi class is printed quickly. So let's stop in loop. Stop within loop and see whether it works that way. So what's going to happen is you'll be waiting for. So we'll be allowing CPU to provide some time to thread two. What exactly I'm doing here? I'm actually waiting for some time. See here, I have only one thing to do. My CPU has only one thing to do. It's 80, 90 percent free. So as soon as it sees that there is a task, it will perform and get it completed. I don't want it to do that way. I want one thread to sleep. Okay, so that it will give time to other thread and it will do the processing parallelly. That's what the purpose is. Okay, we are not doing it for practical purposes. This is for achieving the result like thread 1 and thread 2 in parallel so that CPU can switch the time and make sure that. So what will happen? I, it sleeps for 5 minutes. At that time CPU has time. It will go inside and it will start this one. 
okay and it will print this now you can change this if 0.5 is not necessary i just wanted to show you the result okay step by step cool with this so go ahead and run so run as python run and you can see the result now got it parallel processing is achieved so you are doing hello thread high thread hello class 0 high class 0 hello class 1 and it goes on so we are allowing cpu to print the stuff for us okay so this is what this is adding the stuff parallelly how do you do that but by adding this threads okay in threads you have other methods also so let's let's uh, see the methods of threads okay and what are the useful stuff so from useful stuff one of the method is checking whether the thread is alive okay so let's see that so here i can actually check whether hello thread is alive with the help of is alive method so if uh, you can actually do that in any uh, method that means within the methods also and you say is alive okay it's very common method to actually check is alive you have one more option here is alive that's also fine okay returns whether thread is alive it's a true or false kind of statement okay uh, there is one more thing you can see it's called is daemon i'll talk about it now so is alive and it will check whether thread is alive or dead that means it is completed or not so is alive and it returns true or false so that means you can directly print that okay hello thread is alive uh, two brackets not needed okay that's one thing second thing you can get the name of the thread okay so thread has a static method to get the name of the thread so you can actually ask for thread thread dot and you have get name okay so get name self or get name basically self is good because self is giving you uh, the, the instance itself right so thread dot get name will give the name of the thread okay if you have get name do you have set name that is also one question so we'll see that okay so name of the thread so now you can actually have hello dot set name okay and i'll just say hello thread. okay or i'll just name it differently i'll just say uh, thread one And then for high, I'm also going to use the same thing and I'll just say it as it's a thread too. Now, there are other type of uh, threads called as daemon threads. Daemon threads are daemon processes which will run uh, behind the scene. Okay. Whenever CPU gets some time, these threads will be executed. Daemon threads best example is having uh, uh, logging processes or auditing processes. So logging, auditing are something for you. These are not business processes, so you can mark them as daemon threads. So how do you create a daemon thread? So now here you just actually mark this like let's say I'm creating a daemon for high. Okay, so I'm just calling it as high daemon. Okay, and then you actually instantiate high. Just by saying daemon, it's not gonna be daemon for sure. So you know that. So you will just say high daemon dot and you just say set daemon and it's true so that means you ask this particular class this are you ask this particular thread to be a daemon thread now this thread will only execute when cpu has time but the thing is cpu has ample of time in my case so it doesn't make any difference for cpu to actually run a normal thread as well as daemon thread but with that so let's start a daemon thread also so i'll just say hi daemon uh, dot set name i'll add a name into, into it and say it's a daemon thread instance of a class is a thread itself why because it's a child class of thread remember this instance of this class is a thread itself okay so what i'll do uh, here once these two threads are starting you can actually start a daemon thread as well Will be that so you start high demon dot start okay and you actually join that particular thing here so you say demon dot 
dot join. What this join is doing in all this process? Let's see that. 